Oh boy. I did it again. I was searching and I found something and I had to have it. And you guys know it was on the must have 2022 arcade list. So you can't blame me, can you? In this video, we're going to check out the big blue. All right, here it is behind me, the big blue. Let's check it out. Okay, so here it is in all its glory. Now, the interesting thing is, and one of the main motivators for me getting it is that it did have Marvel versus Capcom in it. But the funny thing is, is I was wondering when I was looking at this, what did this actually originally have in it? And the coin door itself gives you a little clue because this is actually four coin acceptors. So my hunch was that this was a Captain Commando and when I opened up the control panel, I got confirmation that it actually was Captain Commando because you can see there's players one, two, three, and four start and things like that. So, uh, so, so that kind of gave me some clues as to what this actually was in a prior life. But the cool thing is that supposedly it's running a working version of Marvel vs. Capcom 2. Now this wasn't the version with the Q sound, so you can see uh, the speaker grill area doesn't look the same as the big blue with the Q sound. So anyways, and the other thing I noticed is the front of it was painted black instead of blue. So that should have blue there. And you can see, if you look, you can see there's areas where the blue paint is showing. So I'm probably gonna try to citrus strip that off. And then what I'll have to do is there's two bolts for the lock bar that was put in there. I'll have to fill those with Bondo and probably get a, a color match for the big blue color so I can restore that back to blue. Um, and then the control panel was black here, although I've seen it blue and black, so I don't know, I may leave that blue, we'll see. But the real thing, or the real thing I wanna look at here is, is uh, you know, is this actually something that we can get working? The CRT does not have a monitor chassis. However, I do have a K7000 monitor chassis in here that was recapped from a while ago. So I'm gonna take this out. We're gonna put a monitor chassis in here and see if I can get this thing going. Uh, supposedly that's all it needs. So we'll unwrap that and put that in the big blue and see if we can get it running. And I'll show you really quick. You'll see there's no monitor chassis back there. Okay, so this is the first time I'm opening this. So it's gonna be a surprise to me too, but the seller said there was no monitor chassis. So, and it looks like, oh, that door is heavy. There indeed is no monitor chassis. So we have a monitor that's good, but we got no monitor chassis. So we're gonna take that K7000 monitor chassis and hopefully we can wire it all up and get it working. Now that's the Naomi system. So this is running Marvel versus Capcom 2, which is, which is killer. I don't know if that's what I'm gonna keep the system as, but we'll see. So there's the Marvel versus Capcom 2 hardware. Now this does uh, output VGA. So you can see there's a VGA connection here, but because I'm not using a monitor with VGA, I'm gonna actually use the RGB connections, which come off the JAMA harness. So the Naomi systems comes with, comes with both typically. So you can run it VGA if you have a monitor that will accept it or RGB. So it looks to be all intact. So I'm gonna go get the monitor chassis. We'll hook it up and then see, can, you know, is this running? I bought this as a broken unit. The seller did say that the Naomi system worked and that the monitor did work when there was a chassis in there. I guess the chassis died. I don't know why the chassis isn't in it now. Uh, it could have been recapped, but there isn't one. So we're gonna take that K7000, put it in, and hopefully, hopefully it works. We'll see. Okay, so here's the monitor chassis. We're gonna unwrap this. Monitor chassis here. So we should be able to put this in there, get it wired up, and hopefully, hopefully we can get this thing up and running. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're going to first get the monitor chassis and connect. This is actually the degauss coil. So we're gonna connect that real quick. So that's so that when the monitor powers on, it auto degausses. And these are our yoke wires. So we're gonna put this in here if we can. Let's see. Uh, come on, yeah, this is perfect. This is actually, should probably be the same chassis this came with. This is our yoke wires. We're gonna connect those. Actually, I'll take it out really quick so you can see where those go. They're gonna go right here. There's, a four, po there's four posts. Now, one of these is uh, more further away than the other, so there's really only one way you can put this in. So let me get that on really quick. This is actually kind of tough because the horizontal width coil is right, right above it. It's actually kind of hard to get these on sometimes just because they're kind of, it's kind of like a small space. So 
All right, we got that on and we got the degauss coil on. Okay, uh, these are our power wires. Now, unfortunately, the power wires are spliced on this, so we'll have to figure out how to connect those. I'll probably use a quick connector. Uh, this is actually the back of the, the tube. Uh, I noticed someone cracked this. I'm hoping the tube wasn't vented. So if someone cracks this glass, it will vent the tube and the tube is then rendered useless. So hopefully that didn't happen. So let's just assume that that's good. But then we got to connect uh, the neck board. So the neck board does, it is notched, but the thing is the way this is, it's actually kind of uh, been hacked a little bit, but we should be able to get that on no problem. Let's see. All right, so that lined up pretty good. And you can see it from the top, there's pins there. Those pins line up. Um, now that piece is a little cracked, but I don't think we'll have any problems. You push that on, make sure it's snug. Our uh, red, blue, green drive are all up here on the top. So we'll, we may have to mess with those depending on how things go. The last thing that we have to connect before connecting um, a couple other pieces, we have to connect the anode to the top of the tube. Now, I'm super anal, so I'm gonna actually go get my, my trusty uh, discharge tool just to make sure that we're good. You know, I don't wanna touch it before I know that, but there's, there's nothing there, it should be good, but hey. Want to make sure. So the reading on this was was zero, so we're good. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the anode. Oh, I'm stepping on the uh, stepping on the poppy things right now. So I'm going to take this, the anode cap here, and I'm going to connect that. See, it goes right like that. We're going to connect that here. This is actually kind of tricky to get on the first time you do it, but just sort of. So I got it on there. So that's good. So technically, the only thing I need to do now is connect. The, damn it, I keep stepping on these poppies. <laughs> is connect the power. Okay, there is a ground wire that actually is dangling right here that has to go here. So um, I'm gonna have to go and create a wire to sort of bridge those together. So we'll have to do that. Um, I might just do that off camera. And then unfortunately, I don't have the right connector for this, so I'm gonna have to splice it, which really sucks, but they've already spliced this end. So I'm gonna splice the positive and negative into, um, in here like that. And then this is actually gonna go, this is gonna be grounded to the monitor chassis somewhere. So that it's good that this is here. We'll ground it somewhere uh, on the monitor chassis, probably, you know, to this screw or something like that. But, uh, but yeah, so we're, we're well on our way and hopefully we can get this thing working. So I'm gonna be back after I connect these things. And then uh, I really wish I didn't have to splice this, but unfortunately I don't have that connector. So I'm just going to have to do that. I'm going to check the voltages of these two wires. So the, these should be the wires that power the monitor. So I just have my voltmeter here. I did power up the system, but let's check to make sure that we're getting the proper voltage. Okay. Uh, you can't really see that because of the light. Let me get out of the way. So it's about 114 volts. So I would expect somewhere between 120, 135, something like that. So, so that should be adequate. I just wanted to make sure that's coming off the isolation transformer, so we should be good. It looks like it is playing. It's playing blind, so there's no display right now, but that's good news that the Naomi board works. Take you for a ride. All right, we're going to shut that off. While we're at it, we're going to connect the video. So the video is going to go right here. That's how that connects right there. So that should be good to go. There shouldn't be anything we have to do there. Now, keep in mind, I'm not using VGA because this monitor chassis does not accept VGA. So the last steps we have to do is we have to somehow get this black wire off the neck board connected to that guy, which I'll do in a second. And then we're going to connect power. And I don't want to have to splice these, but unfortunately I don't have anything that I can sort of build a connector. So we're going to, we're going to splice these into the positive and negative. I'm going to connect the ground and then we should hopefully cross your fingers we should be good to go before we move forward i just want to say something that's really important when you're dealing with the monitor and the monitor chassis you have to be extremely careful treat it as if that thing is live and definitely just respect the fact that a monitor can have stored voltages so always discharge it safely and all those things before you work on it it's very very important and i can't stress that enough now the other thing i wanted to mention is i want to give a quick shout out to douglas i'm gonna get this wrong douglas <laughs> Why can't I say Douglas? Douglas Schenberger. He created these cool Retro Ralph hats for me. Uh, unfortunately, he doesn't have a storefront to sell them, but maybe if enough of you guys want them, he can produce some. But I just thought they're really cool. Uh, they say Retro Ralph on the side. Uh, so thank you very much, Douglas. It was really cool of you to do that. And I told you I'd featured it in a video, so, uh, so there we go. All right, let me wire this thing up. I'm gonna wire it up real quick. And then hopefully after we have power and ground connected, we may be in business. 
Okay, I'm gonna splice these wires coming off the monitor chassis so I can connect it to the power coming off the isolation transformer. I'm also gonna connect ground so that the chassis itself is grounded. And you know, I don't know, this will be a shocker if this works first try, but it, for all intents and purposes, it should work, but we'll see. Okay, everything is wired up and this is the moment of truth. So here we go. In order to be as dramatic as possible, I wired this up Clark Griswold style. So let's hope for the best. All right, marquee light is lit. We gotta fix that though. That marquee is looking sad and... Oh. Okay, okay, at first glance, without even really seeing much of this, I think I know what's going on. So what I think is going on here is that a lot of times, yeah, I can totally tell. So this board, this Marvel vs. Capcom 2 board, operated at two different frequencies for standard resolution and medium resolution monitors. My guess is that there's a dip switch setting to set this to uh, standard resolution, which is what this K7000 monitor is. So I'm gonna go inside the house, do a quick little bit of research real quick on the PCB, or the, you know, the Naomi system and see if there's a switch to switch the uh, frequency to uh, standard resolution. Before I do that, if you encounter a problem like this where you boot up and you see like double screens like this, or even quadruple screens or three screens, but you can kind of make out the game, it's probably a resolution setting. Now, keep in mind, not every monitor or not every PCB allows you to change the frequency. So sometimes you just have to have a medium resolution monitor. But in the case of this, I believe there's a setting. So let's go in and see. Okay, I pulled up the Naomi manual for Marvel vs. Capcom 2, and there are, is actually a dip switch for 15K or 31K monitor. So we're dealing with 15K monitor chassis. So it just says this first dip switch needs to be switched to on. So we're gonna go back, I'm gonna shut the arcade off, we're gonna flip this switch, and we should be in business. Okay, so there is the set of dip switches right there, and that's number one right there. So we're gonna put this one all right, to the on position, and we should be good to go. So let's fire this thing back up and see what happens. Okay, we change the dip switches, back to our Clark Griswold switch. All right, if we did everything right, this should fire up. All right, there's the marquee. Sorry, you can see my light in there. There's the marquee, and let's see if this thing fires up. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Okay, the colors look, the colors look washed out, or the color looks washed out, but other than that, I think we should be good to go. So we'll give it a second, let it boot. And if so, we took a game that showed up here, not even working, and got it working. I'm super stoked about that. Uh, if you do encounter this problem, yeah, there we go. So the text is all good. Let's let it go a little bit through the boot cycle. And we should be... Yes! Nice, guys. We did it. That is exciting. It's really exciting when things work out the right way. Let's see the intro. Yep. We're good to go. Okay. So with that said, uh, what, what I wanted to talk about now is just talk about the state of the cabinet real quick. There's some things that have to get done here. Like there's some cabinet damage on both sides of the cabinet. So I'm gonna have to do some Bondo work and things like that. There's some cabinet damage up by the top of the cabinet. Also, I gotta do some Bondo work there. And then I gotta figure out how I'm gonna skin this thing because it has a Marvel vs. Capcom 2 marquee. I, do I wanna keep Marvel vs. Capcom 2 in it? I don't really know, I don't know yet. So I'm just happy to have a working, Marvel vs. Capcom 2 is an awesome game, but I just have a working system, super, super stoked. Uh, let me know what you think, guys. Hopefully these little tips in here, like the monitor resolution thing and stuff, help you if you encounter that similar problem. But I am stoked out of my mind. Look, look, that's without any monitor tweaks. So yeah, the color on the monitor is a little off, but but I mean, it still looks pretty good. So anyways, yeah, the, the marquee is gonna need to be replaced. It depends on what I wanna do with it. The sky's the limit with this. It's a big blue. I got a big blue and that was on my 2022 list. So I'm feeling pretty good about 2022 so far. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up, consider subscribing to the channel, put your comments below. What should I do with the big blue? I wanted a Punisher, but but it's got Marvel versus Capcom too. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I know what we have to do real quick. 
We're going to coin it up. We're going to coin it up. Ready? For a ride. Gonna take you for a ride. I'm going to take you for a ride. If you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to the channel. I said that already. And put your comments below when I hear from you. That's it for now. We will see you on the next one. I'm gonna take you for a ride. Boo doo doo doo. Boo doo.